If you want to use this program from from ICOM, the Windows program, you don't need to use it as a client server. You can just use it on the computer connected to the radio with the USB cable. All right, this is Jeff W6FCC. Guess instead of RSBA1, we're going to call it ICOM Radio Control Software for Windows because within the package there is RSBA1 and there's ICOM Remote and there's a USB driver. So in the device manager, you're going to have ports and LPT when you connect the radios. And we have two radios in his case. And the program picked COM7 and COM10. Okay, now can you run RSBA1 without running ICOM Remote Utility? Well, you actually can. Now, the first thing you got to know is you have to know what kind of radio it is. And you do have to pick the right connection, but you can say we're not going to use the remote utility. If you do that, you have to know what the CIV address is, which you're going to have to get from the radio. You're going to have to have set the baud rate. And uh, when you know all that stuff, you should be able to connect to it. Now, you notice there's no audio device written here, but let's see if this even works. We'll go ahead and connect. And uh, I'm waiting for things to start happening here. And lo and behold, we are connected to Rich's radio here on uh, on 80 meters. So, but there's some other things you're not going to be able to tell by doing this. For one thing, you have to know all these details in order to make this work. It's a whole lot easier if you start by running ICOM Remote Utility. You get more features. So we're running the latest one, the version 2.10. And here is two radios, which we added uh, by going up here and you go Options, Local Server Settings, and you add a radio. And when you do this, I'm just going to try it now, you say accessible from other PCs if you want to set it up as a server. And this pull-down box should list the radios that are shown up in the device manager if you've done everything correctly. You notice there's two radios over here, COM10, COM7, and there's two radios over here, uh, COM10 and COM7. But we're not going to continue installing at this point we've already installed the radios and then we gave them names like WZ2D 7C beam because that's the one that has an IC IV address of 7C and this is his other radio so we're done there and then of course you have to have users so he's created a user for himself one for me and then a couple of others on here Danny and, uh, and then a test one so this is now connected and lo and behold, you can run RSBA1 still, only this time with the remote utility running. Uh, when you now pick a remote utility, you can pick, you notice the 7D here is COM port 7 and CIV dress 7D. There they are. If you pick the other radio, it changes the COM port and the CIV address, and it has the correct baud rate. But this still isn't the best installation yet. Uh, you can do this, but the problem is that if somebody else tries to access the radio remotely and you're using it, they won't know. All right, next. When you hit the connect set here, yes, this will all work, but let me strongly recommend that you actually connect to it. If you connect to the radio that's visible to the HICOM remote, now, a couple things happen. Number one, anyone that's accessing this system remotely is going to see that this 7C beam radio is already in service. It's already being used. Let me bring up my thing again. And it'll say busy. See that where it says busy? The other thing that happens is you'll notice over here that these mod and AF, these are the settings for, for example, what happens when you record video. It's a record audio. It's going to go into these directories and what happens when you want to modulate the transmitter with something other than the mic. The mic should be the default, but you can also modulate it with 
other sources, but let's stick to the mic. The fact that I'm connected means the radio shows is busy, and over here, when you say that you're connected to this particular radio, the dipole, let me connect to the beam, and it automatically switches. And now, when you say connect, you get the same result as you had before when you didn't use the ICOM remote utility. The uh, voice memory, uh, we have a few pre-recorded voice memories. If I bring up the scope, for example, and I'm sitting here at 14 megahertz, I got no power, basically. I'm down to zero. I'm going to put the scope on on the center, two and a half kilohertz. Let me uh, let me transmit a voice transmission. Here's a QSO that we recorded earlier. When you hit this, it should. Uh, oh, I see. It says play only. Let me change that. Don't need to monitor it either. Let me hit the flex QSO and watch the transmit button go on. And here's the audio. Now this is upper sideband. So it's above the carrier. We're on 14 megahertz. Notice that 14. And the data being transmitted from this source called Flex QSO is being sent to the radio. Now, how is it getting to the radio? Well, let's look. In the mod, you'll notice it's coming through V audio. You do want to be connected to it to get V audio to work. Now, when I stop this transmission, this Flex thing, I go back here and look at what's going to modulate the radio. It's flipped automatically to mic. This is an advantage. This thing will automatically switch to wherever you need to be in order to make the system transmit audio. And now I'll just uh, do this one more time so you can see with the voice. Oops, there we go. And uh, when I hit the voice thing, it flips down here to V audio. And when I turn that off, it goes back to mic. These are some of the things that happen when you use the remote utility properly. So you do want to be connected and again it's going to show any remote user that you're actually using the radio. All these other features look pretty similar. So that's it. So in order to run RSBA1 on the computer that has the actual radios connected and this is connected to this COM port 10, uh, you do want to run our COM remote utility and connect to the radio that you're going to be using and it'll make life a lot simpler for you. And then when I shut this down, or when I disconnect, you do want to do this. Now the radio is shut off and I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave this program running because I want to be able to access it from my own computer. So we're going to close the connection, but that's it. So yes, you can actually run RSPA1 without having the remote utility running, but you do have to know a lot about the radio, and it's a whole lot easier to run the ICOM remote and then connect to the radio and then go ahead and run RSPA1. I don't know if that's going to help, but I hope it does. But this is all stuff done on the server computer that has the radios connected physically by the USB cable. So we're not dealing with the client yet. This is strictly the server. So to review, you have a computer that you want to connect the radios to with the USB cable. And you've gotten out your ICOM program with the three utilities on it. The USB serial driver and the RSBA1 program that installs ICOM remote utility and this RSBA1 simulated radio program. If you have all that on a computer and the radios are ready, you can actually run RSBA1 as a utility to control the local radio and it adds a lot of features. Uh, you have the scope and all the stuff that you have on the radio but everything is mouse controlled and you can use your keyboard to enter data and you have like uh, 2600 memory locations. Uh, you can play pre-recorded audio. You can do a lot of things you cannot do with just the ICOM radio itself. So this ICOM Windows program, which they call RSBA1, but it's really a package of three, can do a lot more than, uh, than you might think. It's definitely worth looking at, and uh, we use it all the time.